If you are an AI artist and you are getting images like this and this and if you want to create images like this and this then you have come to the right place. Today I am going to talk about 5 mistakes that you should avoid when using stable diffusion. So let's get started with the video. So before I start talking about these mistakes that you can avoid, I'm going to teach you how to run stable diffusion first. If you don't have a good PC or you don't even know how to install stable diffusion, I have a very simple solution for you. You can come over to diffusionhub.io and you can start running stable diffusion within two clicks. They provide really fast GPUs such as A100 and they provide up to 40 gigabytes of VRAM. You don't need to worry about any installation, you don't need to worry about any code and all of the extensions models are already pre-downloaded so I would suggest you to go and check out this website and you can get 30 minutes for free when you log in once you click on launch you can select whichever plan you want to choose and you can start running your stable diffusion in just two clicks coming to our five mistakes that you should really really avoid when using stable diffusion so let's come to the first mistake that a lot of people make is using just one checkpoint for every single image so when you're selecting a checkpoint, you should know what the checkpoint does and what it specializes in. For example, I have selected realistic vision over here, which is solely based on realistic images and it is not very flexible if you want to create a very sci-fi type of images. So if you go ahead and try to create a realistic image, it would render out a really amazing image. But if you try to go for an anime one or or something else that is not very realistic you would not get a really good result so that's the first mistake that a lot of people make so once you have decided what checkpoint model do you want to use the second mistake a lot of people do is they write really really bad prompts so i have a very general template of how i write my prompts so i'm just going to put in my prompt over here so as you can see the prompt is typically very simple a lot of people write in sentences which is a really bad thing stable diffusion is not really good with sentences you should go with words so for example uh, you can see i've started the prompt with appearance of the subject that i want to create so i have written a close-up shot dynamic photo i have said to the stable diffusion that i want a, a very dynamic close-up image of the subject then i have said it should be a middle-aged lady then i've then i've started uh, talking about the appearance of that lady Lady, let's say for braided hair or long curls then I'm, I'm talking about accessories which are necklaces gloves scarves uh, fancy top uh, again I'm talking about her appearances and external features such as hair lips nose then I'm talking about the background so farm and I'm just in general talking about the appearance that I want inside that image as you can see I am not writing a very long sentences I'm breaking that sentences into smaller words and then I'm putting that smaller words into a specific sequence so the sequence is you start with the subject then you go on with the background then you talk about the image and the quality of that image so you can see you can you can write ultra detailed real life textures then you can also talk about the type of camera that you want to use so this is how you write a really really good prompt then inside the negative prompt it can be really simple or, or you can even make it complicated but if you do make it complicated then it it might interfere with the renders as well so i've just kept it simple and i've just used this default um, negative prompt which realistic vision itself have given us so i'm just gonna keep it at this third mistake that a lot of people make is they don't use the weights inside your prompting so for example you can see i've i've given a little weight of sharpness over here at 0.7 so basically when you talk about weights so each and every sentence before a comma has a neutral weight of one so you can consider middle-aged lady as one braided hair as one for example if you're trying to create long curls and you're not getting that result inside your stable diffusion then what you can do is just select part of the sentence just click on control and your up arrow key and then what it will do is basically it's a shortcut which is used for creating these parentheses and then you put a colon and then you and then you increase the weight by 0.1 and by 0.1 i mean 10 percent so this is how you can increase weights for certain words inside stable diffusion which will have more weight over the other words and more priority over the other words this is how you can control your prompt a little coming to the fourth mistake that a lot of people make and you should avoid is selecting random resolutions and trying out what works for you 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 don't have to guess what resolution might work for you you also have this option where you can lock in and you can save a lot of time so for example all of these 1.5 base models are trained on 512 by 512 
and they also work great with 768 but uh, do not go below 512 or you might get really bad results so i'm just gonna select 768 for this example and i'm just gonna click on generate you can see this is quite realistic but still it is not entirely perfect another mistake that a lot of people make is they don't use loras so what basically a lora is it is basically a small model which you can place over your checkpoint models these loras are trained on very specific niche and uh, they will help you redefine your checkpoint based models and they will help you a lot when you're generating images for example let's take this lora uh, called detail tweaker lora so this lora is basically used for enhancing your details inside your images so if i open this image and you can see on the first image we see a lot of detail in the second image we see a very uh, generic mid-range detail and in the third image we see very few details so once you put this lora and you play around with their weights you can either increase the detail or decrease the details these types of loras are called style loras so the other type of loras are called character loras so this lora is trained for jenna ortega and if you use this lora then you will get her face also one thing that you have to make sure when you're selecting loras and if you're trying to mix them with other checkpoints you have to make sure that your checkpoint model and your lora both have the same base model so your realistic vision has sd 1.5 and detail tweaker has again 1.5 so then i can use this lora with my realistic vision over here but for example if you see jenna ortega was trained on sd excel over here which says sd excel then if i try to use this lora with realistic vision one over here then it would throw me out an error so these were the five basic mistakes that a lot of people make and you should avoid making these mistakes also make sure to like and subscribe and if you have any doubts and if you want to have a conversation with me you can comment down and i will definitely reply to you till then see you